My name's Sue Yarachi. I'm a specialist emergency physician who's just left the public hospital system after 35 years of working in New South Wales public hospitals. And I'm here today as one of the more seasoned emergency physicians to lead discussion about the way we should manage and assist people in acute mental health crises better, faster, and also dealing with a lot of the things we do badly at the moment. And now, you actually said that you're very happy to leave the system. Why is that? Yes. What I've found over the years is that the system, together with society in general, I think, has got a lot more risk averse and rigid. And we've started trying to manage risk by narrowing down what we allow people to do. Whereas what I'd like to see is more empowerment of skilled staff to use their judgment to manage risk by feeling they can do a good job. Not only is that good for job satisfaction, but it means that they work better and they're happier and therefore that flows on to treating our patients and clients in a better way, more um, humanely. Now safety has been a big issue in this panel session that you have yes. just facilitated. What do you see as, as the main issues? Because we've heard the safety of um, patients, consumers, also the, patient, uh, the safety of staff and we've seen some pretty graphic videos. That's here. right. The videos we saw were quite distressing. What I'm seeing happening, whether it's patients presenting in an acute behavioural crisis or whether it's a chest pain patient or a patient with shortness of breath, is that we get really scared of missing some diagnosis. And the fear that drives us doesn't necessarily improve the safety of the patient. But we're driven to do that because the sanctions on us relate to the things we're scared of. We're blamed for so-called missing something, or in the case of a mental health person, especially if they're suicidal, if they escape from our containment and particularly if they harm themselves, we're seen as complicit and even responsible for that harm having occurred. But paradoxically, if we create distress by containing that person, we're not held to account for the distress that we cause them. And so we're actually, in a sense, worsening the patient's safety in order to improve our own sense of safety. And I think that's actually creating a bad workplace as well as a bad service. What are, were, were some of the um, services then that were shown or that you talked about during your panel session? What could you highlight about them? Did we see some interesting, good new models of care? We did. I, I would talk about two main things that came out of that panel. One was two psychiatrists who were very open-minded about caring for patients and are doing the opposite of what most specialists are doing, which is distancing themselves into little subspecialty niches, whereas patients are getting more and more complex. What those two psychiatrists are advocating is having open-mindedness in clinicians so that they can manage the complexity of the patient needs. Uh, the other thing that we saw was people creating much more ideal, both spaces and services that include senior staff with good resourcing, good spaces and enough staff in spaces so that they can provide a good service. And one of the things that was mentioned after we finished the discussion is that having a safe space to work in with enough support and not feeling overburdened actually makes a clinician do a better job because they feel safe and they're not scared and so they open up they're more humane and they make good decisions. Okay, so all of that makes perfect sense and we're seeing it happen. So wh yes. what are the barriers and how do you, how do you break them down? Well, it, like generally happens at um, conferences, we get the speakers from unique situations to come and tell us about their examples. We heard from Paul Prize at St Vincent's, which is in a city, Sydney, how they have many benefactors. Unfortunately, the average suburban hospital doesn't have a lot of wealthy benefactors. And one of the real challenges is to try and apply the exceptional models to the non-exceptional environment. And this is something that emergency departments face all the time. So, for example, children's hospitals have wonderful resources for children, 
but in fact the vast majority of children in Australia are seen in mixed emergency departments that don't have all the, the bells and whistles. And so we have to find a solution that doesn't require that level of resourcing because it's unsustainable. But on the other hand, we were told that we shouldn't have low expectations, that we should refuse to accept poor conditions and poor service. How we resolve that, I'm hoping we'll go into in the next session. Fantastic. Well, perhaps I'll catch up with you after that session too. Now, could you give us some, a little bit of insight too, because we have an earring-led discussion here yes. too. Can you, I'll just zoom in. If we zoom into this earring, I was at the um, Australian Skeptics Convention over the weekend where they had um, earrings with various molecules, biological molecules on them, and they had caffeine and theobromine from chocolate. And of course I bought both pairs so I could have one of each. And then I found the perfect earring for today. This is a serotonin molecule. And serotonin is one of the main neurotransmitters involved in depression. And so I just thought, as a person who expresses myself through earrings, I just had to have the right theme for today. Fantastic. Thank you very much for wrapping up that discussion for us. Thank you.